Radio Sport. Good evening and welcome to Friday Sport Preview on Manx Radio. Rob Pritchard here with you until 6pm to take the latest look at the sporting action on the Isle of Man and beyond. So, coming up this evening... The Isle of Man continues to shine on the international athletic stage. We hear about how our local athletes have been performing and what's in store over the coming weeks. Having taken Ireland Games bronze last summer, the Isle of Man women's national football team will take on fellow Ireland nations in a new tournament this month. We hear how pre-season preparations are going for the two teams at Vagabonds Rugby Club and a prestigious international polo tournament on Ireland has returned this weekend. That is all to come this evening. Very good evening. Welcome back to Friday Sport Preview here on Manx Radio. I'm Rob Pritchard here with you until 6pm to take a look at this sporting action coming up on the Isle of Man this weekend and beyond. And plenty to get through this evening. So let's dive right in and we're going to start with athletics. And as fans of the 2024 Olympics in Paris are welcoming the start of the track and field events today at the Games, it's been yet another busy few weeks for athletics on the Isle of Man and further afield. Along with local events, we've also seen Manx competitors making an impression both in European competition and making headlines even beyond that. To look at the latest developments and, developments and also what's in store over the coming weeks, I caught up once again with Isle of Man Athletics correspondent Dave Griffiths. So I'm joined once again by local Isle of Man Athletics correspondent Dave Griffiths. Dave, thank you very much for joining us once again. We'll look back to what's been happening recently, and we've got to start with one of the Isle of Man's young athletes who's uh, continued making headlines recently. Regan Corrin competed at the Under-18 European Championships and also set a new benchmark in high jump. So for those who don't know, could you just explain some of the achievements Regan has had over the last few weeks? Well, I think the main thing was that he received his first Great Britain vest uh, just recently when he was selected to represent Great Britain in the European Under-18 Championships, which was held in Slovakia. Regan, for his first major international competition, he just took to it like a duck to water. He, he just performed like a veteran, no nerves, absolutely superb. He got through the qualifying competition on the Friday evening, whereby the top 12 got through to the final. He then had, he had a slightly nervous start because he actually failed at his first height, but he got it on the second attempt and he got everything every other height up to and including two metres five which he called his personal best with first time clearances at which point he was in third place and in the bronze medal position and it really looked when the bar went up to two metres eight and every competitor left in the competition failed with their first two jumps uh, it looked like uh, the bronze medal might be coming back to the Isle of Man but unfortunately the very last competitor who could overtake Regan was the competitor from Serbia and with his final jump he cleared two metres eight which knocked Regan down into fourth place right at the end but it was a fantastic performance to finish fourth and to do it in the style that he did. You talked about Regan Corrin not quite able to make 2.08 metres that clearance at the European Championships but he overcame that challenge locally didn't he? He actually did just the other night on Wednesday night in the local track and field league like you say having failed narrowly at 2 metres 8 in Slovakia he actually achieved it uh, at the second attempt uh, at the NSC. Uh, It was just an absolutely brilliant jump. From uh, one standout athlete from the Isle of Man to another and someone who has uh, continued to impress and put in some eye-catching performances uh, across the pond. David Malarkey as well out in the uh, United States now has been competing more recently with Florida State University. He's on the move in fact heading to uh, North Arizona. That's right yes that move came certainly out of the blue as far as I was concerned. Uh, It was just something that I picked up from his uh, Instagram uh, probably about a month or so ago and I think one of the sort of significant things which really shows the level that he's actually at at the moment is that the standard of athletics in the American collegiate system is just so high. It's a really cutthroat competition. Uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, another university basically headhunted him, I think, and that it was a really major news story that particular week, you know, that really shows uh, more than anything, I think, just the level that uh, that David's at. He's, he's known throughout, you know, throughout the country. And yeah, it just goes from, it just gets better and better for him at the moment, and long may it continue. In the next, I suppose, few weeks, what can we look forward to in the Isle of Man athletics scene? Well, the really big thing coming up is the No Rest for the Wicked series, uh, which as the name suggests the athletes and the officials get absolutely no rest at all because it's six races in six consecutive days uh, and that starts on Sunday the 11th of August, which is a week on Sunday, with what I suppose is the big one really, which is the Isle of Man Marathon Championship and there's also a supporting half marathon race. Entries have closed for that one, but uh, the numbers are brilliant. There's 105 in the marathon, there are 454 in the half marathon. Paris 2024 of course taking place right now and uh, there is some uh, more
more Isle of Man interest out there at the moment. Off the track, if we'd like to call it that, of course, one of the Isle of Man's very own race walking judge, uh, Steve Taylor, taking part in his third Olympic Games as a race official. How good is it to see a Manx official in Steve Taylor once again officiating on the international stage? Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, I, I think it's the real recognition for the Isle of Man as well. Uh, we've had an official who learned the ropes, as it were. I mean, Steve was a, a high class race walker anyway, he competed in the Commonwealth Games. Uh, but as an official, he, he basically sort of started as a complete novice uh, officiating local events. And yeah, within a quite a short space of time, he actually was the chief judge at the 2012 Olympics. He's he's judged all around the world, World Championships, European, Commonwealth Games, and he's back on the judging panel in, in Paris. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just testament to what rewards are available if you're prepared to work hard. And that's a message for any potential official, I think. Now, just uh, finally taking a look at an event that's coming up in early September, and it may not have the same profile amongst people on the Isle of Man, say the likes of the Parish Walk or the Sig Quirk Half Marathon, just to name a few. But there is a big development with one of the Isle of Man's uh, longer distance events coming up, isn't there? Yes, we've just talked about Steve Taylor, and he is kind of at the forefront of organising an extra element to the annual 20 kilometre race walking championships at the NSC. Now, this event takes place on Sunday, the 8th of September. Now, this year, uh, the event has been granted a World Athletics uh, ranking status. Um, and the idea is that uh, hopefully uh, there'll be some really top class uh, athletes coming over to the Isle of Man to compete in this, perhaps from Great Britain, but hopefully from further afield, you know, from Europe and uh, possibly the rest of the world. Manx Radio Sport. Well, this time, just over a year ago, the Isle of Man women's national football team was celebrating winning bronze at the 2023 Ireland Games in Guernsey. What's more, they could be pushing for even more success against other Ireland nations at a brand new tournament they'll be part of later this month. Well, to explain more about that, as well as how the women's team's been performing recently, is Isle of Man captain Becky Corkish and women's team head coach Wayne Lisi. Becky and Wayne, thanks for joining us. A very important and brand new tournament coming for women's football in August. So, uh, Wayne, for those who don't know to start with, could you just explain what's coming up for the Isle of Man women's national team? So, on uh, August Bank Holiday, we'll be shooting off to Jersey for the inaugural uh, Cherry Godfrey tournament. It will consist of the Isle of Man, Jersey, Guernsey and Isle of Wight teams. And it will give us the opportunity to play a tournament outside of the Island Games. And Becky, from the team's perspective, to have yet another opportunity for the for the women's national team to compete compete on the international stage how encouraging is that it's brilliant yeah i mean like wayne just said we normally only get the opportunity to play at the island games which is every other year so to be able to break up that that year where we have nothing it's an amazing opportunity that we're able to go away and play again as a team and then for wayne for you on the, on the coaching side of things obviously so much gets built around naturally the likes of when the island games come around but to, to have something like this where do you think this would rank alongside something like an island games well the standard is going to be the same um, it's going to be the same kind of standard of teams we play against uh, in the Island Games. So it's been since the Island Games last year, it's been a reset for the squad. And um, we've got new players in the squad and a few younger players, and that'll give them the opportunity to see what kind of standard they'll be up against when it comes to the Island Games next year. And Becky, from the players' perspective, again, it's it's not as if the team will be going into this without any minutes out on the pitch at all. You've actually been in action recently. So for those who don't know, what are the games that the Alabama women's team have been involved in recently? So we had a quite a heavy weekend a couple of weeks ago where we had three friendlies in the three days. We had a couple of teams come over and play us on the Friday and the Saturday, and then we we. We shot off then to Bursco to play the Lionesses support team. So it was good, good opportunity for us to start playing 11 aside again with the team and just put it into a bit more perspective, really, of where we're at at the minute. It was a, it was a good opportunity actually to play in the same kind of format as an Island Games because you, we played four matches in five days last year, and this was three matches in three days. So it allowed us to use the full squad, give some valuable game time to some of the younger players as well. So it was, a, it was a good weekend. It allowed the opportunity, as you've just mentioned there, Wayne, for other. Players players to come in as well there are some you know great you know technical and experienced players in the Alabama women's squad already but to see that next selection of players coming through and maybe fighting for positions over the next year or two that how encouraging was that very um we've got um a handful of youngsters that didn't play weren't in the squad last year the squad's a lot bigger now um, and all I can say is it will push shall we say the experienced members of the of the squad and hopefully 
when you've got competition for places, then that pushes everyone. Becky, going not just this particular tournament that's coming up in August, but uh, looking, I suppose, to things more locally going into the next season. When the next women's season comes around, it'll be several weeks. The local season will start after this particular tournament. So for, for you as players, will this be good preparation going into your respective club campaigns? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're training with the island team at the minute and obviously on the run-up to a tournament, we do try and train as much as we possibly can. Without this tournament, I think the pre-season with clubs is probably not, well, it was not as intense as what we would do it from an island point of view. So it definitely gives us the upper hand on getting our fitness in sooner, getting back touching the ball again. So it definitely will help going into the season. Come back to the whole idea of an international tournament that's taking place in August. From winning the bronze medal at the Island Games last year, what were the biggest things you learned as both uh, coaching staff and as a team from, from that campaign in Guernsey? Certainly, it was my first Island Games as well as manager. So I think one of the major points I learned, and I go back to playing so many games four games in five days is to to use the squad more and rest players when they need rest and and work that out from the start i, I don't think i think it was a bit inexperienced of what i did last year so i've, I've got lots to lots to learn uh, i'm looking forward to next year to be able to do that looking forward to this tournament so from the team side of things what's the ambition from this particular tournament what do you think you can achieve well we're not going in it if we're not going to plan on winning it for sure i mean the girls are so ambitious and they're so determined and and taking it from the island games last year we were so gutted to have not walked away with the gold obviously we were made up with the bronze and we got a medal but it's just made the girls hungrier to make sure that we prove that we are the best team from the islands that they can be and Wayne not just this year but going forward if this is a tournament that's going to be something that develops for the long term how beneficial do you think it could be for the women's national team set up for the Isle of Man in the, in the years to come oh it's massive um, because it gives us something to work towards every single year so there's no there's no break and you don't lose the, the focus because as soon as the island games is over we've got another tournament the following year so it's fantastic manx radio sport well now we're going to take a look at rugby matters and after catching up with what's happening at douglas last week this time our attention turns to vagabonds in what is naturally another busy pre-season preparations are well underway as both the men's and women's sides get ready for their respective upcoming new campaigns First off, we've had the chance to catch up with the Vagabonds ladies team. Well, to discuss their hopes for the season and getting more female players into the sport, I spoke with squad members Ella Goodwin-Jones and Sophie Henry. We started off the season with a completely new team. Um, we had nine new uh, recruits um, come, and come on to uh, Vagas for the season and... We went through a lot of change, a lot of kind of finessing, and I feel towards the end of the season we really had found our um, kind of our way together and our rhythm together as a team. Um, so I feel like we ended on a high. And Sophie, similar question to you on on that side of things. There were a lot of changes th- throughout the season, and in, in what is already the women's NC One Northwest, a highly competitive league already. But the fact that there seemed to be a nice upward curve throughout the season as well and how people were progressing and learning as a team. That must have been extremely encouraging for all of you. Yeah, it was uh, fantastic. Uh, Shout out to the coach, Jack Kane. Uh, He put a lot of effort into the girls and obviously starting last season with the new girls, as Ella was saying there, um, some of them came with no sporting background and ended up being fantastic. So, and it's just push and push and then we'll we'll get there this season. I'm very positive. And Ella, on that point of getting new faces in, it's so, it, it's a challenge that all sports face at some point on the island is getting new the, the next generation in, if you like it. But the fact that you were seeing players coming in enjoying the experience even if they've had no experience of rugby in the past as well that must be great for the long-term future that people are interested in the game absolutely i think people find starting a new sport daunting as someone who came from doing no sports to joining rugby um you kind of have that anxiety of showing up and not knowing the girls but i think the great thing about vagabonds is from your first session you're taken in you're mentored there's always a social about there's always someone to go for a sea swim with or a walk we're super encouraging as a group we're very inclusive um so i think it's making people aware that it's not as scary as it it might initially seem to come up and have a go in terms of getting other people involved just from someone who's been around the system for a certain amount of time but what what do you enjoy the most about rugby on the island i just love it all i i love the girls like their family you show up and everyone has a laugh um you try hard together the amount of work that goes into it um, is what I enjoy. I like putting all my effort into something and rugby is 
definitely something I put all my effort into. And to see the other girls do the same, it just pushes you harder. Now coming on to the pre-season preparations, obviously still a fair few weeks away from the season starting, but uh, Ella, in terms of the preparations so far, how are things coming along at the moment? Yeah, great. So uh, we've got Jack Kane as coach and Kat Beswick as well. Um, So that's really nice to have a couple of different coaches. We've had very structured start to the season. So the last few weeks, uh, we've been working on kind of skills and your passing. Um, And now we're moving into more contact and tackling. And then we'll continue to keep going into forwards and backs after then. So we've kind of really structured ourselves this year. We've got team goals set down this year. Fitness is one of our key things. Um, So we're working a lot on on kind of weight training, uh, fitness training as well. So there's been um, a real difference I think from our from our last season to this season and how we've come straight into pre-season smashing it. And just on that point there Sophie the fact that it's getting the ball rolling so early on you know what benefits do you think that's going to have going into the rest of pre-season towards the start of the next campaign? Yeah starting earlier this year I think they can just get so much more in so I think last year we were just trying to get the basics in but this year As everybody at the moment knows the basics, we're starting to get into more tech stuff so we can start doing different passes, we can start doing double tackles. Like There's just so much more we're starting to do and it's fantastic, especially having two coaches. You can get that one-on-one if you need it. And the fact, Ella, that you're able to, not just along the general coaching side, like you've already mentioned, the team there that are going to be working with you, but being able to refine those different areas as well, not just in pre-season, but across the season as well that must have a long-term benefit for the players as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm still learning stuff myself. I mean, I've only been there two seasons and uh, still now we're all of us are supported individually in our kind of our areas too so you know we know Sophie is super strong on doing those really intricate passes that we have no idea what (laughs) she's doing uh with you know Leona our captain at some point or you know to the backs and then you've got our forwards who we're learning more tackle skills and Mm -hmm. um maybe different plays off a line out so it's just looking ahead at what we can do differently from last season especially with our league this year uh we're playing quite a lot of new teams so they're not necessarily going to know our calls and our plays. So it's going to be really nice to hopefully see them work a little bit harder for us um, and come out on the pitch too. A different league this year. And as Ella's pointed out, there's some new teams in there as well. So that must be quite an exciting challenge that there's a little bit of an unknown, I mm-hmm. guess, for the team to come up against. But there could be some big opportunities. Yeah, it's nice to go into a different league. And obviously there's teams that don't know who I am. So that's really nice because some of the teams that were showing up last year were like, oh no. So no, it'd be nice to go in against the new girls and it'd be nice to see different skills from other teams that we can work on as well. The ones that we've been playing previously probably have memorised our calls to be fair. So we're going to go in with new calls uh, against new teams. So I think, yeah, we've got a good chance this year and definitely... Ella Goodwin-Jones and Sophie Henry of Vagabonds Ladies Rugby Club there. Well, also looking to hit the ground running are the Vagabonds men's side who are looking to follow up a positive pre-season, previous season in Counties 4 ADM Lanx, Cheshire. Team member Daniel Bonwick also spoke with us this week about what they made of their lofty finish last time out and how they're looking to emulate that good form going into the new campaign. I'm joined now by Daniel Bonwick from the uh, Vagabonds men's side. Uh, Daniel, thanks very much for taking a few minutes to speak with us. Now, we're... Uh, yep. In the, uh, the the crunch part of uh, pre-season, I guess, the preparation's well underway across the respective clubs, Vagabonds men included. So before we get to what's happening now, we'll just uh, rewind uh, a couple of months back and the County's 4 ADM Lanks Cheshire campaign that just happened. Strong campaign towards the top of the table. How did you and the rest of the team feel it went? No, I think it went really well. All considering we had a lot of new faces come into the club. John, obviously that was my first full season as well with the club. So I think from where we started, this, we set our goals pretty early on, knew where we wanted to be. I think fair play to all the lads. We stuck at it and got where we wanted. Probably would have liked to have been one position higher, but that's how it goes. Swings and roundabouts with having to travel away every week and results don't go your way sometimes. But at the end of it, I think we all did really well and we were proud of where we finished. And it was a slightly smaller division last season compared to County's 3 ADM Lanks Cheshire as well. So you had a bit of time between games. Was that more of a benefit or did that maybe just uh, hold you back a little bit in terms of a rhythm? It's a nice benefit to give us a break and be able to see the families more, obviously, but I feel not being able to lock into that rhythm of you're away, you're home, you're away, you're home. It kind of knocks you when you're struggling for three weeks off. It's It does knock you out of rhythm a little bit, yeah. And for you personally, uh, you mentioned it was your first full season. Now, you, you previously joined during the, uh, not like the last campaign just gone, but the one before. And of course, uh, very tough in Counties 3 ADM. So uh, 
going into this season just got, you know, how different was, I suppose, the mindset and the feeling going into last season? The mindset's there because obviously I was playing previously with another club and it was that took me back to that level. I took a little step away, come back into it. But I love the uh, the travelling away and love the, the rivalries of some of the clubs that we've been to before. And it's really good to get back into the swing of it. So I'm looking forward to the uh, the new rivalries we'll create this year and uh, the stronger teams we'll play. And given some of the results you had last season, I mean, including you did the double over Ashton on the line last season. Were you happy with some of the results you were picking up, particularly against the teams around you towards the top? Oh, 100%. The boys did amazing of all the teams that we played. Obviously, a couple slipped away from us, probably could have won, but that swings around about to rugby. But yeah, really happy all around last season. So we're looking to take that forward into this year and keep building. Let's go back to now then in terms of the pre-season preparation. So quite generally to start with, uh, what's the team been up to to get ready for the next campaign? Fitness, fitness and more fitness at the minute. It's uh, it's pretty horrendous, to be honest. I'm not going to lie, but uh, it's all beneficial. It's really good. Coaches, Franzi, Darren and Mike are really pushing us hard and then starting to uh, link our gameplay together now so it's really starting to come on you hear across the different sports that everyone hates pre-season and how brutal it is but uh, the fact that you are just get you you're getting the ball rolling in some ways whether it's the fitness side of things and then maybe moving into more of the tactical stuff do you think that's going to set you up well hopefully to get you in the best shape possible to start the season oh 100 percent. the boys are really pushing us and they know where they want us to be we've set our goals out we know this is what we want to do this is how we're going to do it. So we're in a really good position as we are. Lots of new faces. Obviously, we'd love a few more new faces to come down and get joined in and have the laugh and the fun. But where we are, we're pushing really hard. So really happy at the minute. Well, like you say, a, a few new faces coming in. And we, we, we spoke with the, the Vagas ladies team separately as well. And they, they've been encouraged by some of the new faces they've had in over the last year or so. So to see more coming into the sport in the men's side of things, how encouraging is that? It's really encouraging. It starts to see that people are really actually starting to see what can be enjoyed in playing rugby. So there's a lot of benefits to take from it, real camaraderie with uh, the team that we're in. It's always a good laugh. So as long as you're okay with getting pummeled and beaten up, then it's a great laugh. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> you go going towards the, uh, the next season. I'm not going to ask you to make any specific predictions or anything like that, but where, where would you like to be in and around in terms of uh, Counties 4 ADM next season? We're 100% pushing to be where we were last year, Rob. We want to be up there and thereabouts competing with the best of them, so... That's where we've got to look at. Our fitness is going to kick in, take other teams out of it completely, we hope. So that's where we're aiming for, definitely up at the top again. And we talked about new additions in terms of the players that were there from last season. Is the playing group largely the same as it was in the last campaign? Yeah, we've got a really good core at the minute at the club, so that's really building well. We have lost a couple of players. They've gone elsewhere and done all the things, but with new people hopefully coming in as well, that'll really build that core that we have at the club. I just thought about the coaching staff. You mentioned uh, Franzi there before and came in not, not last season, but the season before when results were quite challenging as well and then to have a positive campaign last season in uh, Counties 4. What about the work that uh, the, he and the coaching staff have done over the last 18 months or so? Yeah, you really couldn't fault what they've been doing with the club. Franzi's one of the most positive human beings you will ever have the pleasure of coaching you at rugby. He makes everything sound really nice and then it turns out to not be so nice, but really pushes you positively. And then having Darren and Mike come along supporting him is really where we need to be going because they're they've got the vision and they know where they want to be. So yeah, couldn't ask for better coaches at the minute. Manx Radio Sport. And now, something a little bit different. This weekend is seeing the return of a prestigious polo tournament on Ireland. The 2024 Viking Cup got underway earlier today and runs across the whole weekend as well. Well, Manx Radio's Simon Richardson spoke this week to Neil Ulyate from one of the event's coordinators, Ramsey Crookall, who explains what makes it a different spectacle for competitors and spectators. It's open every single day to the public. There's a public area, and on Saturday and Sunday it's £10 for adults, and it is free for kids under 16. Uh, they walk to come out to see the polo it's like uh, playing hockey on the back of a horse so it's a great thing to see and quite a magnificent spectacle how difficult is it logistically to organize an event like this on the island Yes, it is quite difficult. <laughs> you, first of all, we don't have power on the field and you don't have ablution facilities and you don't have running water and things that you would just uh, assume when you have a, a proper venue. Um, however, it's a well-oiled machine on the island and there's a lot of companies on the island that are quite used to doing this. So as we have our agricultural shows that we have, so there are people here that do this on a regular basis. So there's quite a support out there to actually get it out. So there's some very good companies um, that that help and make it happen. So uh, actually, if it's all planned with ease, it comes together very nicely. Because we've been doing it for four or five years now, it's it's become well-oiled. And uh, I think it, it's just how many people are going to come and uh, have we provided enough for them. 
Now, it's organised by yourselves, Ramsey Crook, all in connection, in uh, cooperation with, of course, the Triskelion uh, Polo Club. Club Polo yes. Club, yeah. Who's taking part? Shrewsbury Polo Club, it'll be the second performance, uh, second attendance at the Viking Cup. They uh, came last year with a the team. They'll be led by Glenn Henderson. He's their coach and former five goal New Zealand international player. And for the first time, we're going to have two teams all the way from Perthshire um, competing from Dundee and Perth Polo Club, in Scot- which is one one of Scotland's largest polo clubs located in Errol Park, led by club manager Tom Bell. So that's going to be a first for Scotland. And then finally, we're going to have three teams from local playing, and they're going to be led by Fraser Houston, who's the head of the Triskelion Polo Club, and played by uh, his brother and all the dedicated polo players on the island. Tell us about the venue itself, Balakuli Equestrian Centre in Balaf. It's a, it's a spectacular location, isn't it? Yes, it, it, it is. Uh, there's a little bit of history on the actual Balaf, uh, on, the, on, the, on the polo fields. If you go to the website, thevikingcup.co.uk, you can go and read a little bit about the, the field itself. But it's been owned by family for many, many years. It's a beautiful field. And a couple of years ago, the Triskelion Polo Club took over the fields uh, to use it for the question facilities. And... Um, w- Fraser um, is the guy who maintains the fields there and it is an amazing job that he does and anybody that's ever been to the fields can, uh, can, can really account for that. It's, it's amazing what he does there. Neil Ollier of Ramsey Crookle there talking about the 2024 Viking Cup taking place and it'll be taking place between 12pm and 5pm each day on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Well, rounding out things tonight, let's take a look at some of the other sporting headlines today, this Friday the 2nd of August. In motorsport, John McGuinness has been confirmed to take part in this year's Manx Grand Prix and for the first time will compete in two different classes at the meeting. The Morecambe Man will once again be on board the 500cc Winfield Patton in the Classic Senior Race and will now also ride a 350cc Step Plan Honda in the reintroduced Classic Junior Junior event. Elsewhere, Manx international trials rider Caitlin Adshead will be hoping to stay top of the standings in this year's European Championship. She's taking part in rounds five and six of the championship at Grosshubach in Germany this Saturday and Sunday. And the Isle of Man snooker team will put their skills to the test against some of the top players from Britain and Ireland this weekend. A four-strong Manx men's squad of Daryl Hill, Dolan Mercer, Marek Kenny and Conor Mann are taking part in the 2024 Home Internationals competition in Leeds from today until Sunday. And their first match takes place tonight against Scotland at 7pm. That's all we have time for on Friday Sport Preview this week. Many thanks to my guests as always. And if you've missed anything this evening, this show will be available shortly as a podcast to download the only Manx Radio Sportscast on the podcast section at www.manxradio.com. Have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend as well. But from me, until next time, it's bye for now. Manx Radio Sport.